Hello class, this is Professor Creek. In this video, we'll be taking a look at a competitive profile matrix. Uh, so I hope you've read up on that already. And we'll walk through an example. In this case, we're looking at the cell phone industry. So we're looking at Apple versus LG versus Samsung. Um, so kind of a snapshot of what the cell phone industry looks like right now. Uh, this video is in 2020 and the data that I'm talking about will stem from 2020 as well. Um, and so we've got weights and we've got ratings. Weights throughout this textbook that we're working through, weights are always going to be at the level of the industry. So when we assign weights, what we're asking is how important are these success factors for all three companies. And really it could go beyond these three companies, the entire cell phone industry. Whereas ratings, when we get to those, we're talking about only one focal firm. So for this column, we'll be talking about how well does Apple respond to these factors. In this column, it'll be how well is LG responding to these factors. And finally, Samsung responding to the same factors. How do we get this list of factors? Obviously they're already here written in for us during this example, um, but this can be basically whatever you want these factors to be. Generally, we want somewhere between eight to 12 factors, um, but they can change based on what you think is most important for a particular industry. So you don't have to stick with the ones I've got here, um, but they should be the most important factors you can think of for a particular industry. So let's get ahead, go ahead and get started here, uh, first with the weight column. And remember this is industry level and weights always have to sum up to one. So we can go ahead and build that right into Excel to start with. So we we'll just wanna know the summation of these factors. Okay, so when we sum up the weights, we need this to equal one. So it might actually be good to see some decimal places here. And the way I like to start doing this is to know what's the average weight. And so we can actually create a new little block here. Um, and because we have eight critical success factors, right? You can see down here, the count is eight. Um, so we just do what is one divided by eight, 0.125. So our average weight is 0.125. And that's what I'm gonna put in just to start. Uh, but we can go in and change this, and, and we should, uh, right now. And the reason I did that is so that we can say, okay, what's our first critical success factor? In this case, it's market share. Is that above average or below average in terms of importance to the cell phone industry? And when I look down the list, I would think market share is, is fairly important, um, and, and really all eight of these are important, but relative to the others, uh, perhaps just slightly above. So I might just uh, change that to a 0.13 to indicate it's slightly above average, um, but not too much. And for the next one, phone storage, I would think phone storage is less important, and my rationale for that is, you know, these days we have a bunch of external places to store things uh, and most cell phones come with quite a bit of storage now anyway, so perhaps that one's a bit less important. And store locations, again, I'd probably go a bit below average for store locations too. Uh, reason being, a lot of commerce is done online, so maybe we don't care as much about store locations as we used to. R&D, certainly extraordinarily important if you're a cell phone provider. Um, so I'm gonna go in and ratchet that one up pretty high. Remember we've got our total down here, there's not quite one, but as we keep going down this list, um, we'll, we'll, we'll address that at the end. Customer loyalty, pretty important in most businesses. I would think certainly here as well, I know a lot of folks uh, Certainly loyal to Apple, um, so maybe a 0.15. Uh, 
advertising. I don't know if your guess is as good as mine. I, I think um, it was fairly, fairly influential, but compared to some of these other factors, maybe it's, it's kind of average. Product quality, I would consider this to be very important, maybe only second to uh, this R&D here. And lastly, price competitiveness. Interestingly, I, I think compared to a lot of industries for cell phones, this one's less important, and I'll show you why later in the video. Um, so make that video point one. And so now we've put in all of our weights, but we see that the total is, is not quite where we need it to be. So Essentially, we need to scale one of these down um, by just one one hundredth here. Um, so let's just do that to customer loyalty, make that one a little less important. And now our weights sum up to one, so we're good to go in terms of weights. The next step is we need to do some homework, okay? We need to not just guess how important these critical success factors are for each of these three companies, um, but we should do a little research so that we know we're giving these companies uh, the best rating that we can. Remember that as we rate these, we cannot duplicate a rating. So ratings can be one, two, three, or four. There's no decimal points here, uh, which would also mean the most possible companies that we can compare the time on a CPM is four companies, right? Because we can only give four ratings out. And so I've done some of the research for this, um, which is on these other tabs down here. So for market share of the first one, I just went and looked, you know, what is, what is a snapshot of the current uh, cell phone market in the US? And so we see in 2020, Apple has about 55.5%, Samsung right about at 27%, and then everyone else is really trailing. Um, interestingly, if, if this is kind of a sidebar, if you don't know much about this company here, uh, this is a Chinese firm, and they're actually the second leading cell phone provider um, in the world, uh, but they're, they're Chinese and the US hasn't, hasn't really adopted that company for whatever reason. Um, and so clearly LG is, is a far number three here. So in terms of our CPM, Apple would be the winner, so we'd rate that a four. Uh, LG is the loser, we'd rate that a one. Uh, we could perhaps rate it a two since it's still above uh, all the other carriers. Uh, and then we would give Samsung a three. Okay, phone storage. Again, we'd want to do some research into that. So I, I did a little bit here. And right now the, the leading phones have 1,024 gigs and three out of those four are Samsung. Uh, if we go to second place, right, 512 gigs, um, we see quite a few apples here, again, Samsung, but no, no LG. So for this one, we put uh, Samsung as the winner, Apple a three, LG was nowhere to be seen, so we give that a one. Store locations. Um, Four for Apple, since they actually have store locations. Samsung and LG, as far as I know, uh, don't have store locations. Instead, you just have to buy them at some other retailer. And then you give them a two and a one because of that. R&D, the important one. Um, it's funny, when I do this in class live, uh, there's often a lot of disagreement between loyal uh, fans of one brand or another. I did a CPM on the car industry and some people, you know, they, they love the American made cars and others are more uh, loyal towards maybe Toyota. Um, and I suppose if I did this one in class, I, I'd incur something similar for Apple versus Samsung. I'll give the edge to Apple. I have an Apple, so maybe I'm buying. For loyalty, I would essentially say the same thing for the same reasons. Advertising, I, I personally don't watch a lot of television, um, so perhaps I'm not the best person to be judging this. I would say certainly Apple or Samsung 
um, would be the winner, though I'm, I'm not sure which one that would be, with LG um, being last again. Product quality, uh, again, there's probably some disagreement among students. Uh, I'll give the edge to Apple, Samsung second, and LG a distant third. And then price competitiveness, just to reiterate that we should be doing research on these. I have one more example of cost here. And we can see the newest iPhone selling for $1,249, which is way, way, way more than I've ever paid for a cell phone. Um, and that's why you can even buy it by month if you'd like. Uh, LG coming in right around 800 bucks and then the most expensive Galaxy I can find is right around 900 bucks. So LG finally gets a win here. Uh, we'll give LG a four, Samsung maybe a, a three, and Apple gets a one. Way more expensive for Apple. So the hard, the hard work is done at this point and we just need to calculate the scores, which we do by multiplying the weight times the rating. So in Excel, super easy. And we just multiply those two cells. And then we can drag that down and we have a, a score for each of our eight factors for Apple. And now we just need to do the same thing for LG. Multiply the weight by the rating. Drag it down. And lastly, for Samsung, multiply the weight, rating, and drag it down. And the last step is we just need to sum up the total scores for each of the three firms. Total for Apple, 3.48. Total for LG, a lowly 1.55 and the total for Samsung is 3.14 and if we go back to our our first example here the market share I think our CPM would, would suggest um, you know, a good rationale for why the market share is the way it is right LG clear number three Samsung doing pretty well, but the clear leader here is Apple. Our CPM would suggest fairly similar results here. So the idea behind the CPM is whichever firm has the highest total score down here um, would be the strongest of the three firms or the strongest firm in the industry.